stay the winds. And we're going to look at our message. Last night, we talked about the sixth angel and the second woe that came on August 11, 1840, that laid the foundation to show that the early Advent movement under the Millerites and later that will be established by the Seventh-day Adventist church movement that we as a people would have the correct interpretation of prophetic, a correct prophetic interpretation of Bible prophecy. And that event happened exactly as predicted by one of our early pioneers, Josiah Lynch. Now, as we talk about state of winds, I want to show you that what we're talking about is directly connected to your early Advent history. But before we go any further, I would like to first of all call your attention to a promise. Because we need the Holy Spirit. It is not me that must speak to you. It is the Spirit of the living God from the Word of God that must speak to all of us. Are you understanding me now? We are living in the time of the end. Many of our people are sleeping on the verge of the close of probation. This world as we know it must come to an end. Sin can no longer continue to reign in this world. Righteousness must soon reign forever and ever in this world and in this universe. And so the days are approaching. A storm is coming, relentless in its fury. But in the midst of that storm, God will preserve his people. Did you hear what I said? And so God is trying to waken us, shake us, and waken us to the realities of what is about to come. Yes, trials and difficulties are coming on upon us individually. What did Jesus say? He said, be, he said, don't let your heart be overcharged with certainty and drunkenness and with the cares of this life. Let that day come upon you unaware. In other words, you get so caught up in your personal problems and in your personal issues till you cannot prepare yourself to think soberly about your eternal life or about the prophetic fulfillment of the signs of the times all around you. And so a promise we're going to claim. I want you to turn me to John 16, 13 in your Bible. John chapter 16, verse 13. And when you get there, just say amen. Are you there? In John chapter 16, verse 13, the Bible says, Albeit, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And show you, what everybody, things to what? Come. It is God's will that his people are not caught by surprise as the events are taking place in this world. We are watching natural disasters that are unprecedented in the history of the planet. <laughs> we are listening at wars, rumors of wars. Everything is happening. And yet, it seems not to be sufficient to awaken God's people. What will it take? Will it take a loss of your finances and your bank accounts before you begin to call on Jesus and seek the Lord while he may be found? What will it take? Is it taking the loss of a job for some of us just to get right with God and realize that this is out of my hands? It's nothing I can do. What will it take for Jesus to get your attention and understand your salvation is more important than your job, your house, your car, and any earthly thing down here? Your character, is your character prepared for heaven? Do you have a character that can stand in the presence of the glory of God? Jesus is coming, ladies and gentlemen. Don't you understand what Jesus said? There shall be upon the earth the stress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts filling for fear, and for looking after those things coming upon the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then he says, and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Jesus is coming. He's coming. We need to prepare. Let's have a word of prayer together. Father in heaven, 
We bow because, Lord, this is not the hour for man. Finite minds, finite men with a stammering tongue cannot present your message. But, Lord, we ask that you will put your words in my mouth and use these feeble lips and this frail form of clay and may it glorify your name. Grant that Jesus will be seen and uplifted. Grant that your word will be the sure word of prophecy. That we might do well to take heed as a light that shineth in a dark place till the day dawn and the day star rise in our hearts. Lord, open our eyes, we pray, and guide us by your Holy Spirit. Now teach us, may holy angels that excel in strength that keep thy commandments, that hearken unto the voice of thy word, may they also join us here in this sanctuary. In Jesus' name, and for his sake, amen. And far away to seaward hung the cloud rack like a pall. For hurricanes, these are the darkest times. In the last 30 years, the number of the most intense has doubled. And there's more to come. Good morning, folks. As you've heard, NOAA, with its National Weather Service, is predicting a very active hurricane season. Hurricanes are actually processed more energy per second than 10 times the bombs dropped on Nagasaki. What chance could we humans have of doing anything useful? With global warming stoking the waters that fuel hurricanes, and with the billions of dollars of damage wrought by these megastorms, is there any way to control them? There is a possibility to control hurricanes. While the scientific establishment doesn't think so, there are a few mavericks who think it can be done. The end of human history has already been written. There are no surprises to God, and there are no surprises to those who understand what God has revealed. We are not headed towards some humanly engineered utopia. We are not on the way to an age of peace and tranquility. One of America's biggest cities sinking into chaos. Tonight we have witnessed lawlessness and chaos on the streets as the violence escalates despite we calls from Baltimore for peace. where the governor of Maryland has declared a state of emergency. This is a grieving family that deserves answers for their son. Together we united! <laughs> Place, 
and what our Lord says about the future is horrendous. According to the Lord Jesus, the future for this world and its inhabitants is very, very tragic. We need to realize how close this clock is to getting toward the midnight hour. And I think that's why for our sake, for the sake of our family, for our nation, we need to cry out to a holy God. Mm -hmm. um, this is coming faster than anyone can see. A powerful earthquake struck Nepal on Saturday. The 7.9 magnitude quake's epicenter was just 80 kilometers east of Nepal's second largest city, Bukhara, devastating the surrounding area and sending tremors through northern India and even triggering avalanches on Mount Everest. The death toll has reached over 7,500, with more than 16,000 people injured. Thousands of missing are still unaccounted for. I know I, I worked very hard on the Intelligence Committee to try and keep up with what was happening in the world. It got to such a crescendo, I could hardly keep up with it anymore. Mm -hmm. The events have mm -hmm. picked up such a pace and are going to continue. It's just like the Bible forewarned that it, the, in the last days it will be like the beginning of birth pains. In my opinion, we are far beyond the beginning of birth pains. We're moving far down into the process. For women who are listening to this show mm -hmm. today, you know what I'm talking about, what it's like to deliver a baby at the very beginning stage and then at the very end before the baby is born. All I can tell you as a mom who has given birth to five babies, the birth pangs are very close together, they're very intense now, and we are literally watching month by month the speed move up to a level we've never seen before with these events. And that's why the best thing that we can do is have churches and pastors explain our times. Believers need to get our lives right with God. And then we intercede. We intercede and intercede. And then, not despair, prophets said we look to the future. We long to see those days and live in those days. Why? Because it's the return of a soon and coming king. Jesus Christ is coming back. We, in our lifetimes, potentially could see Jesus. Jesus Christ returning to earth. This is one of the most exciting times in history. We need to be exactly watching the tenor of the times, be observing, and look up our redemption draft night. These are wonderful times, but we see the destruction, but this is the destruction that was foretold. The scale of the flooding has been difficult to believe. In southwestern Peru, it almost submerged this bridge. Further north, the rain brought down this landslide. The country's president has declared... ...have decided we really need camps for adults. We've got to have a civilian national security force. And this even after saying that he wouldn't do this. And know that I am God. States has built a supercomputer with a mind of its own. Can man stop the perfect thinking machine before it destroys the world? The missile has just been launched. This is a voice of war. Say the enemies or disobey and die. It may be too late, sir. Oh my god. It's making you a prisoner.
are the eyes that see what you see. For I tell you, many kings and prophets have desired to see what you see, and have not seen it. To hear what you hear, and have not heard it. I thank you, Father, for hiding these things from the learned and the wise, and revealing them to the innocent and the simple. It was a large tornado that tore through New Orleans East, destroying several homes. The tornado left a trail of destruction, ripping off roofs, toppling trees, and downing power lines. A warehouse security camera captured the moment the tornado ripped off the building's roof and flipped over an 18-wheeler. It went about two miles and it covered about a half a mile swath of land. New Orleans Mayor Mitch Landrew. You've now been able to see the damage, it's devastating. A lot of families that lost everything that they have. The tornado was part of a larger weather system that was sweeping through Louisiana, Mississippi, and Alabama. More than 2.5 million people were in the storm's path. Just north of New Orleans, two more tornadoes touched down. Mobile homes were destroyed in the town of Killian, and several more homes were damaged in Madisonville. The Russian President Vladimir Putin has ordered an inspection of the Air Force's readiness for combat. Defense Minister Sergei Shuigo says the inspection will review the combat alertness and wartime air defense systems. The Defense Ministry posted a video on its YouTube page on Monday showing jets firing rockets during a training session in the Lipetsk region. The West also has a weather emergency. A storm that dumped snow on Washington State and Oregon has brought flooding to California. Relentless rain turned a mountain into mud, pushing this entire home into the street. 39 schools in Marin County were forced to close with rain filling up creeks and spilling into streets. Fire Battalion Chief Brett McTeague. We have a lot of residents um, that are still in their, in their resident, not able to get out right now. The continuous rain has pulled much of Northern California out of the drought, but NASA climatologist Bill Patzard says the rest of the West still has a long way to go. It took us many years, almost decades, to get into this punishing drought. There is no quick fix. It will take us years to decades to be totally out of the drought. Some heartbreaking images out of New Zealand. Despite efforts that were underway to save dozens of pilot whales after hundreds were stranded on the beach, at least 250 of the 400 whales are unfortunately dead. That's according to the Department of Conservation. Rescuers attempted to refloat the rest. About 50 returned to sea and only to rebeach themselves just hours later. Scientists don't know exactly why whales beach themselves. This is one of the largest mass whale strandings in New Zealand's history. A Russian jet accidentally killed three Turkish soldiers and injured 11 others in an airstrike in northern Syria on Thursday.